We play and call it work. Why do I love the Inquisition? This is why I love the Inquisition. For 40K, my greatest love is the kind of really deep, rich backstory and the lore. And these are some of the fluffiest kind of most customizable armies you can get into. So if you're a 40K player and you really want to have an army that speaks to your favorite part of the lore, one of the three branches of the Inquisition is able to do that for you. Whether it be the Xenos Hunters, the Ordo Hereticus, or the Ordo Malleus going after demons, uh, you can kind of get whatever you want. Before we go any further, make sure you check out the links in the description below, and you'll get to check out uh, a variety of different battle reports using some of the different armies we're going to talk about. This is the studio collection that we have, and the closest approximation to what we could call our Inquisition army, because we have it made up of the Sisters of Battle, the Forces of the Death Watch, as well as the Grey Knights. And we've also lumped in uh, the actual Inquisitors, some of the stuff you're able to take for their retinues, and the Officio Assassinorum as well. So this is totaling 17,023 points. We're going to start off by looking at the closest allies of the Ordo Hereticus, and that is the Sisters of Battle, as well as the Adeptus Ministorum. So... With the armor in the back, we're looking at three exorcists, four emulators, seven rhinos. We have three pentient engines. We have 18 repentia with two mistress of repent. Uh, we have our five arco flagellants, as well as a collection of six ministerium priests. 20 seraphim with various loadouts. 30 different heavy weapons, which we're kind of counting as our retributors, even though they can be mixed into some of the other squads. Then 105 battle sisters, majority armed with bolter, but we do have some special weapons mixed in there. Leading the army would be the four cannoness, and of course, St. Celestine herself. Moving over next to the allies of the Ordo Xenos, we have the Forces of the Death Watch. Uh, if you're familiar with the channel, personal favorite of mine. So up front leading the army, we have four different librarians, two chaplains, and a watch captain. Moving back here, we have another three watch captains, watch captain Artemis, and a watch master. The bulk of the collection, looking at the various veterans, this is some of my personal collection as well as the studio collection and some faces you might recognize from the narrative campaigns. So we're looking at 11 Vanguard Vets, we've got 7 Terminators, 6 Bikes, and then 52 various uh, veterans on foot. A little bit of Primaris, there's 10 Intercessors and 5 Hellblasters as well. A little bit of armor for the list. We do have a Contemptor Dread as well as my Land Raider hanging out there. Aerial support is the three Corvus Black Stars. Last but not least, we have the allies of the Ordo Malleus, and that is the Grey Knights. Making up the bulk of the army, we have a 72 Strike Team, 11 Inceptors, 5 Paladins, as well as 15 Terminators. Leading the army, we have a couple special characters. We got Castell and Crow, Valdis, as well as Drago, pair of ancients, a librarian. Armored component starts off with three dreadnoughts as well as three dread knights. Rounding off the armor, we have six razorbacks as well as four rhinos. If you need a more subtle approach, we have some assassins here, two Calidus assassins, two Calexus assassins, four Eversores, and four Vindic uh, Vindicare assassins. Loyal servants of the Inquisitors, we have a grand total of 13 Acolytes, nine Death Cult assassins. If you're feeling like being a little bit of a heretic and justifying your use of chaos, we have a pair of Demon Hosts. And then six various Inquisitors. So we have three generic ones that would be great to represent Malleus, Hereticus, and Xenos Inquisitors. And then for some named ones, we have Inquisitor Cotias, Inquisitor Greyfax, as well in as Inquisitor Hector Rex. 
So what is an Inquisitor? It's a tough question, because um, I could ramble on about this for all day, probably, and bore everybody out of their mind. But essentially, an Inquisitor is an individual who has been given, for all intents and purposes, the authority of the Emperor to go out and just keep the Imperium safe by any means necessary. So their job is to go out, find threats, and uh, deal with them in any way they deem fit. So they've got the capability to call in an exterminatus. They have the capability to requisition whatever forces they deem necessary. Uh, there's no limit to what these individuals are capable of doing to make sure they protect the Imperium. Um, so that's kind of the, the too long didn't read version of what an Inquisitor represents. So what do I love about the lore of the Inquisition? It's tough because it's it's one I've obviously been into the lore and they're so deeply integrated in. But for those that aren't familiar with the novels and other things like that, you might not understand how big of a deal Inquisitors actually are supposed to be. So if we want to go on a basic level, we can break them down to the three biggest Ordos. We've got the Ordo Malleus, who is all about uh, combating the demon, the threat from beyond. We've got the... Ordo Hereticus, who is there to weed out heretics, so, you know, those once loyal to the Imperium that no longer are, and then you've got the Ordo Xenos, uh, which is there to go and combat the aliens, so they're all specialized, if you look in the, the lore, the three big threats to humanity and the Imperium, uh, they've got Inquisitors that specialize in dealing with each of that. Now... As cool as they are, and if you've read some of the novels, like if you've read uh, Eisenhorn, uh, it's probably one of my favorite series, um, or anything else involving Inquisitors, you know that they have a huge impact, but not something that would translate well into 40k. So that's where we look at the closest allies that they have, and that's something you can better represent on the tabletop, whether it be a full army, or just adding something, a little bit of flavor to one of the other Imperial armies. There's a lot of versatility you can do with that. So I think some of my favorite parts is that you can tell a little bit of a story with the way you build your army just by including either an Inquisitor, or maybe an Inquisitor alongside... Um, uh, some Grey Knights, some Death Watchers, some Sisters, something like that. So what what makes every different allied force kind of unique? So I think the easiest one to look at would be the Death Watch. So you take Space Marines, you take your generic Space Marines, but instead of being one chapter, this is a combination of different veterans being sent from a bunch of different chapters that are all working together. So you've got one of the most flexible kind of versatile forces that should be able to take on just about any threat out there. Now Death Watch is obviously the one I'm most interested in, but one that's been around for a long time is the Grey Knights. So when I first got into playing, uh, Death Watch was, you could take a squad, Grey Knights were just starting to have the Demon Hunters book, so you could play a more fully fleshed out army of them. But again, this was them being narrowly focused on taking on uh, just demons. And one of my favorite things about the Grey Knights back in the day was the they had rules to make any of your opponent's armies a demonic army. As far as, far as I know, that doesn't exist anymore in the official rules. But it was a really cool, fluffy way that, you know, you could justify having your Grey Knights fight against orcs because, you know, there was rules for orcs in there to be uh, corrupted by Nurgle, let's say. So that was kind of fun. And then Sisters of Battle, pretty iconic. Um, 40k, there's not a ton of female miniatures in the game as it exists right now. Um, and definitely not a whole army uh, that's female like the Sisters of Battle are. So they're another power armor army, another three up save army, but they have less toughness because they're not, you know, uh, post-human genetically modified. They do have the unique mechanics, though, of their faith system, where they're able to pull off some pretty crazy tricks just uh, because of their belief in the Emperor and that the Emperor protects. One of the other things I really like about when we talk about the Inquisition itself as far as the lore, uh, you've got a lot of folks that play the game because they love the lore and they love uh, being able to tell a story, and adding in a single Inquisitor, a single model to a pre-existing army, whether it's one of the ones I've mentioned, or you know, you add an Inquisitor into your Imperial Guard army, 
or your regular Space Marine army, you're able to have a backstory for this one character that could be a really rich, well-developed backstory, but it's not as difficult as writing a backstory for your entire army and having that make sense. It's a lot easier to inject a little bit of your personal lore, let's say, into the game by using the Inquisitor. Now, what draws me to these different models? One thing that I like about all these different lines is that they're relatively elite armies in the way you play them. So, Sisters of Battle, I guess, one of the big draws is if you want an army that, you know, has female miniatures in it, and you don't want to go with uh, something non-Imperium, this is your best way to go about it. Uh, there's definitely some really cool models, but if you're into the retro stuff, the sisters, as of right now filming, they're supposed to be getting new models eventually, but they have not got anything new in a long time. So if you really want one of those classic, iconic looking, you know, late 80s, early 2000s Games Workshop kind of armies, that's a good way to go about it. Because um, you don't have any other option other than that. The Grey Knights, uh, always been, you know, kind of a fan of a relatively simple paint job that you can embellish a lot more. So I like the fact that with minimal skill, you can make an okay looking uh, Grey Knight army. It's lowish model count, but it's one that your original paint job, as long as you don't put the paint on too thick, as your painting skill increases over the years, you can definitely get into more and more of the embellishments on the army and have something really, really super cool looking. And they've got some iconic stuff that you don't see with other Marines. Now, the Death Watch, as everybody can probably guess by the fact that the majority of the Death Watch on the table are a personal collection of mine, are by far my favorite. Uh, in the lore, I think they've always been my favorite sort of thing because everybody's an individual. When you look at Space Marines, I'd rather have my Space Marines with their helmets on, but that takes away any kind of personality or individuality of models. But with Death Watch and the versatility of the war gear loadouts, plus the different chapters, you can get into everybody as an individual. So one thing that I had uh, done a while back, and big shout out to everybody that's helped me with this, is when I built my Death Watch army, I said I didn't want it to be, you know, generic chapters. I didn't, because everybody's supposed to be from a different chapter. So I didn't want to have the collection say, you know, here's my Blood Angel, here's my Ultramarine, here's my Imperial Fist, here's my other Ultramarine. I wanted something more unique. So I opened it up to the community and said, if you have your own special homebrew uh, Space Marine chapter, and you're willing to send me a painted shoulder pad, I'll gladly slap it onto my Marine. And that way we can have something super unique uh, on the table. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of great Death Watch armies out there, but I don't think there's anything quite like mine with the versatility of the different chapters out there being represented. So what can Inquisitor bring to the table for you? Uh, I think the biggest thing is, like I said, you can kind of inject a little bit of your personal story, but gameplay wise, it's uh, giving a, it's an easy way to get some, some basic psychic powers into the list, as well as a big old bubble of uh, good leadership, which a lot of armies lack something like that. So by simply adding an Inquisitor in, you can really give yourself some staying power. Uh, moving over to the Assassins, that's another one that you can easily add a single model that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to go get, but it can drastically change the way the game plays. So for I think almost all of them, if not all of them, are less than 100 points. Uh, an Auxiliary Support Detachment gets you a single Assassin or Inquisitor, and they can really, even though they're minor, change the way your army plays in a fun way. So for all the different reasons, I've talked about the fact that th this is some of, for me, the most lore-rich armies in the game. And the fact that you can choose to collect an entire army based around a certain Ordos and their allies. Or the fact that if you just want to scoop up an Inquisitor, an Assassin, maybe a couple Death Watch guys... Uh, any Imperial collection can benefit from that. So the fact that you're able to take all these lore-rich elements and add them into almost any Imperial army with little to no effort is why I love the Inquisition. So that's why I love the Inquisition. Make sure you tell me in the comment section below why you folks love the Inquisition and the armies they're associated with. And don't forget to check out the links below for some games using these armies. If you're not a Vault member, you can check out the links below anyways. Uh, you have access to a seven day free trial where you get to watch the games plus everything else we have in the Vault because everything we do, we do in pairs. So that's more than twice as much content. Thanks for checking everything out. Leave some comments, leave some love. And as always, happy wargaming.